Relapse and Reassurance When an ailment is cured, it comes to an end. It cannot return. If there seems to be a relapse, it is not a recurrence, but a new manifestation of disorder, perhaps stimulated by fear or expectation. Now, the next time you extinguish the malady by realizing its nothingness, remember that it is extinguished, which means that there is nothing to recur or to return. Euripides makes a woman in one of his plays observe, When once I saw the truth, there was no drug that I could take to unsee it and lose again what once I had seen. It was mighty pleasant to hear of your definite improvement. Now is the time, while you feel better, to put in your best recuperative work. Do not talk to people about your recovery. See thou tell no man is the biblical injunction. Certainly do not exult. Your friends will note quickly enough that you are getting better. You have only to go quietly about your business, every hour expressing your gratitude silently. The good Lord has been with you thus far. Surely he will continue to strengthen and carry you on. Of course, the shortness of breath cannot come back. It is gone for good. As a matter of fact, it never was. There is nothing to come back, so we will have no fear in that direction. Eternal mind, the only mentality there is, Never heard of such a thing as shortness of breath? How then can you hear of such a thing or experience it? You are not going to from now on. You are a veritable giant who can face this deception and walk about in comfort. A prodigious worker you are to respond so quickly and definitely. Now, may I play the role of a doctor by urging you to take things easy, very easy, for a spell? Many people, after being lifted out of a difficulty, plunge right into full activity, socially or workingly. The experience of all practitioners, medical or metaphysical, shows that this is not wise. So may I say again, do not unduly draw on your energies in having a good time or in housekeeping or in any way whatever. First get thoroughly on your feet. You will accomplish more in the long run. When you write next time, do not forget to tell me that you are doing this very thing. You have discovered that you are an important person whose existence in this world as a going concern is essential to the well-being of your family, not to mention a much wider circle. Now that you are pretty much at peace is the time for you to work on this problem. Work to undermine and annihilate it so that there will be no recurrence. Do not wait till illness pops up again, but put in your best licks right now. This is what I am doing, and it is what you must do. There is no cause or urge back of the thing, hence it cannot spring into action. There is nothing to spring. The whole bugaboo is nil and null, silence implying harmony. Now do not let down on the job. Be active and bring this unhappy business to an end. Moving that heavy furniture had more to do with your difficulty than anything else. There comes a time in life when one should be prudent and not run out in storms or lift cook stoves or even shout about his victories. 
Many a time did Jesus warn his people, after putting them on their feet, to say nothing about their healing. There is a reason for this, you know. To boast over one's recovery amounts to daring the malady to reappear. It will even provoke your friends in commenting on the situation to remark, Well, we will see. She is not over this yet. Such adverse thinking is not good for one. You are doing an excellent job with those patients. They represent types that you will encounter occasionally as you surge ahead in practice. It is not difficult to see, is it, that mood or temperament has much to do with a patient's recovery or non-recovery. If he would only half try instead of wonder and complain, the victory would be won more quickly. Hence, feel no discouragement. Go ahead. Your efforts are never wasted. Indeed, I will be surprised if Charlie does not step out as good as new one of these days. Tell him I give him a boost occasionally, as time permits. And Mary, in sending a dollar, does not show any great appreciation or expectation. She would not think anything of paying several times as much for a hat. How little some people value their lives, after all. What are you and I going to do about it? Just take it easy. Do not let them aggravate you. Plug along and do your best. I have been wondering how you are getting along. Somehow I feel as though you are making substantial progress. If you have not come out of that difficulty as yet, you will ere long. The distress does not follow you into your sleep. This means that there are worlds where such troubles cannot enter. Really, you are in that sort of world all the time. One of these days you will so discover. Ailments like yours do not have any world of their own, or locality, or even existence. They cannot talk, and there is not any person or intelligence to talk for them or to project them into your life. Your oneness with God gives you His strength, His insight, His ability to be free. You have the same dominion over distress that He enjoys, and you can exercise it. Keep up your courage and patience as best you can. Probably you are quite all right by this time. Let me have a word or two from you. Tired of you, you say? Why, it is this tiredness of folk that gives me employment. If everybody were okay, what would I have to do? And yet that is precisely what you are, okay all the time. And whenever I think of you, which is not infrequently, I always see a full-fledged giant. This is one way of giving you a treatment. Since you are life expressed, you cannot let go of life. You and it are interwoven. Rather heartening, is it not? So seize the broom now and tear into the housework. I will boost and we will win. Lift up the heavy gates and allow the king of light, hope and energy to come in. I heard the other day, maybe the news has reached you, that the god of bonds and bounds has been dethroned. My, is it not grand to be free, full of courage and the will to live? 